around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Building up the fire this time of night for? More light. See better? See what? Nothing. There's just one more light, that's all. Mister, ever since we met on the trail back there this afternoon, you've been watching me. We're strangers, ain't we? Sure. You've been watching me, too. I did at first, but I trust you now. Crawl back in your blanket. Okay. Better. Now go to sleep, will you? You going to sleep? I'd like to watch the stars a little while first. Ain't no stars but me. I can see them over your shoulder there. Laying on my back gives me the ache. Gives me the ache, too. We got a lot in common, mister. Yeah. You never told me what name you go by. You never told me neither. I'm gone if you ain't the most suspicious man I ever run into. I'm still alive. You ought to quit worrying so much you get old before your time. My pa taught me to worry. Who's your pa? He's dead. Died worrying, probably. No. No, he died of milk sickness. He's a good man, though. Ain't any good man. He was. Why? What he believed in. What did he believe in? Well, he always said he believed in foot washing, saving your seed potatoes, and paying your honest debt. Your pa was crazy. I'm going crazy if I don't get the bugs out of this blanket. Shake them out. I'm going to. Some sleep. It beats me how you know which way to go, Mr. Dillon. That's easy, Chester. Yeah, but all the fella said was he'd found a man's body some 20 miles east of Dodge. You've been riding like you knew right where it was laying. Well, he was a teamster, Chester. I'd just been following his wagon tracks, that's all. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Dillon. Maybe I shouldn't never leave Dodge. Chester, there he is straight ahead there. Do you see? Yes, sir. That must be it, all right. Come on. Oh. oh, look at there. He's still in his blanket. Yeah. Uh, it looks like he was shot right in the heart. Uh, at least the poor fellow died in his sleep. Well, he must have come half awake. His hand's on his gun. He never got it out, though. Somebody sure jumped him fast. Say, maybe it was Indians. 
No. No, his hair's still on. Now, besides, somebody was sleeping over here. Well, I declare. Who do you suppose it was? I don't know, Chester. That he couldn't be a very brave man. No, sir, he sure couldn't. A dirty coward. Go get that shovel off your saddle, huh, Chester? Yes, sir. a long ride like that if only to work up a good thirst. <laughs> I've seen you work up a good thirst just sitting around, Chester. Yes, sir. I'm just lucky, I guess. <laughs> well, I never heard it called that before. Give me a glass of beer, barkeep. Beer or nothing. Give him whiskey. I don't want whiskey. Ain't you man enough to drink whiskey? Drink it? When I want it, I don't believe you do. Drink some now. I ain't bothering you. Can't a man come in here and have what he wants? Cowboy, ain't you? What's wrong with being a cowboy? Nothing. Only I always thought it took a man to be a cowboy. You trying to start trouble, mister? I listen to you. <laughs> What's so funny about that? I killed a man once for telling me not to laugh. Uh, I ain't telling you nothing. Mister, I think you're a coward. You got a gun in your belt. Go ahead, use it. What for? So you can kill me and call it self-defense? All right, that's enough. Leave him alone. What are you mentioning this for? I don't like gunfighting around here. You don't like it. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Oh, Marshal. Now, what's your name, stranger? I'm called Krigo. All right, Krigo, move down the bar. Go on, move. i see you later, cowboy. <laughs> I wouldn't have dared draw on him, Marshal. I ain't no gunman. He'd have killed me, sure. Yeah, he probably would have. My name's Jesse Hill, Marshal. I'm proud to know you. Well, Jesse, you keep that gun in your belt, huh? And stay away from Krigo? I ain't no troublemaker. Yeah, I know. But sometimes a man can't avoid it. Not around somebody like him. <laughs> well, I think I'll do my drinking across the street. See you later, Jesse. Yeah, so long. That Krigo's an awful mean man, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, he's mean, all right. Especially when he's sure the other man hasn't got a chance. wonder where he came from. I never saw him around here before. Now, he's new in Dodge, Chester. Let me tell you something. It had to be that kind of a man who killed that cowboy we buried today. Well, you think it was him? Well, he could have done it. He's enough of a coward. But if he did, no one could ever prove it. Uh, no, sir, I guess not. But he'll make a mistake yet, Chester. His kind always do. You like that material, Kitty? I'd like to make a dress of it. Is this all you have, Mr. Jonas? I'm afraid so. But I'll order more if you want it. How long will it take? Mm, a few weeks is all. Okay. I'll need about uh, seven yards. Mm. You'll have it, Kitty. Mm. And say, hmm? look here. Hmm. These new parasols. Ah. They just come on the Santa Fe today from St. Louis. Hello, Matt. Hello, Kitty. Ah, uh, Mr. Jonas. Uh, your coat's out back, Marshal. Oh? You can go try it on if you want. Oh, <laughs> new coat, huh? I'd like to see it, Matt. Well, you wait here, Kitty, and I'll just go put it on. <laughs> sure hope it fits. 
I had a parcel of trouble talking him into ordering that coat. Well, he's needed it ever since I've known him. Mm. Men just don't like new things, Kitty. Yeah. Now, is there uh, anything else? Ah, uh, no. That's all for today. How much do I owe you? Hmm. Yeah, let's see here. Uh, I'll have to add it up. Well, now, there's a right pretty girl. Go on back to your hogs, mister. <laughs> Salty, too. I like that. Oh, now, now look here, stranger. I don't pay it... any attention to him, Mr. Jonas. You got it figured? Well, it comes to uh, about uh, $2.40, kid. Uh-huh. I'll pay it. What? I says, I'll pay it. You'll do nothing of the kind. Put it on my bill, Mr. Oh, Jones. there you are. I like to buy things for pretty girls, providing they let me carry the package home for them. <clears throat> now get out of here and leave me alone or I'll hit you again. Maybe you're a little too salty. Maybe what you need is a... Ch- Go ahead, Craig. Go. Finish what you were going to say. It's no business of yours. I want to hear what you were going to say. She slapped me. You saw Get her. Get out of the way, Kitty. Gladly. Now, let's not fight. Be quiet, Mr. Gentlemen. Jonas. Yes, sir. Grego, I think you're a coward. I'm going to prove it. What are you up to? A cowboy Jesse wouldn't draw on you. But I will. Are you ready? No. There, I got my gun out and you didn't do a thing, did you? I ain't drawing on you. (laughs) All right, now get out of here, Kriegel. And if I ever see you anywhere near Miss Kitty again, I'm going to break your neck. Now go on, get out. He sure showed his colors, Matt. Yeah. You know, I think that's the first time I ever saw you draw first on a man. Well, I figured he wouldn't draw, Kitty. How'd you know? A Krigo doesn't take any chances. And right now, I'm wondering how many more men he's going to kill before he's through. <laughs> We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first, the crusade for freedom is a crusade for your freedom and mine. The truth dollars people send the crusade for freedom help preserve our own freedom, even as they get the truth and hope to people behind the Iron Curtain. Truth dollars help finance Radio Free Europe and Radio Free Asia, the most effective weapons Western democracy has for countering lies and distortion. Send your contribution to the crusade for freedom, care of your local postmaster. That's Crusade for Freedom, care of your local postmaster. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. Chester. I'm back here, Mr. Dillon. Well, come out front, huh? Yes, sir. You picked a mighty poor time to ride out to Fort Dodge, if you don't mind me saying so. Tell me what happened, Chester. I hear that you witnessed it. Yes, sir, I was right there, Mr. Dillon. Krigo agged him into drawing first. Yeah. Self-defense again, is that it? Yes, sir. The poor fellow was awful slow. And you know what Krigo did? What? Well, he shot him in the gun arm first, then through both knees. And finally, he shot him in the belly and killed him. There's nothing I could do once they'd started. Yeah. Who was he, Chester? A fellow named Lydacker that told me. Some stranger. Huh? Why don't you run Krigo out of town? Ah, uh, running him out of Dodge would just mean he'd go murder somebody someplace else, Chester. Well, at least he wouldn't be doing it here. Yeah, I know. But somehow I... I'd feel responsible for letting him get away. 
Vermins like that oughtn't be allowed to live. Yeah, they wouldn't be alive if he wasn't so careful about picking the man he shoots. No, sir. Oh, say, Doc was down a little while ago. Huh? He's through with autopsy and wants to know who's going to bury that fellow. Did he have any friends? Yes, sir. That cowboy Krigo tried to fight, Jesse Hill. Uh-huh. I think he was a friend of his. He helped carry him up to docks anyway, and he seemed real mad about it all. Quiet, you know, but mad. Uh, that could lead to trouble. How do you mean? Well, Jesse backed off from Krigo once, but uh, you might go looking for him now. I don't think he'd have a chance. And we'd sure better find him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah, Chester, we better... Come on. Maybe Jesse left town, Mr. Dillon. Well, I hope so. Though we haven't looked at right place yet. Somebody said he had a room at the Dodge house. Oh? Uh-huh. Seems to be pretty fancy for a line writer, doesn't it? He's probably spent six months' pay in the last few days. They always do. Well, they can't spend it out on a prairie, Chester. I guess it doesn't mean much to them. Yeah, I know, but you'd think they'd save a little money, a few dollars at least. Oh. Uh, tell me something, Chester. Hmm? When were you at the bank last? Well, I keep my money in my sock, Mr. Dillon. It's safer. Oh, oh, maybe, yeah. Isn't that kind of tough on the merchants when you go to spend it, though? Well, nobody ain't turned it down yet. Money's money. Wait a minute. There's Jesse across the plaza there. Yeah, that's Krigo he's talking to. Come on. Hey, it looks like they're having an argument, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. You gonna stop it? Well, if I can... Krigo! Jesse! They're about to fight, Mr. Dillon. Murder them, Krigo. Go on, draw. Hold it, Jesse! All right, Krigo. Put your gun away. Sure. He tried to shoot me, Marshal. You saw him. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Well, that was pretty easy for you. Wasn't it, Krigo? He shouldn't have tried it, Marshal. I told him not to. You're lying. I heard what you told him. Well, what difference does it make? He drew first. I shot him in self-defense. Yeah, sure. Krigo, did you know that man you killed the other night was Jesse Hill's friend? Jesse was telling me that just now. Well, I got an idea. You talked him into drawing just to work Jesse up to a fight. He was both a couple of bums, Marshal. How about that man on the prairie? Was he a bum? What man? The one that was lying wrapped in his blanket. I don't know what you're talking about, Marshal. Krigo. How long you been killing people? Marshal? I killed my first man when I was 18. Fella tried to knife me, so I shot him. I'll tell you something else. I ain't wanted by the law. Nowheres. Nowheres at all. Did you ever fight a man who could handle a gun? What do you mean? You will someday, Krigo. You'll make a mistake and pick on the wrong man. Will I, Marshal? Oh, I'm going to go and get me a drink. Ain't there nothing you can do about him, Mr. Dillon? Now, there's one thing I can do, Chester. At first, we'll get Jesse and his friend buried. We go still standing at the bar of the Alpha Ganza, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. You gonna take him in? No, I'd just have to turn him loose sooner or later. Well, what are you going to do? Something I've never done before, Chester. 
Well, if it works, it'll save some lives. How? Oh. Well, you'll see. He was bragging about already killing two men since he's been in Dodge. Well, he'll go right on killing men if he isn't stopped. He's like one of them hound dogs that gets a taste of blood in his mouth and, and sort of goes crazy with it, ain't he? Yeah, that's what he's like. Okay. Here we are. Is there anything you want me to do, Mr. Dillon? Yes, there is, Chester. What? Well, you'll know when the time comes. But stay out of the way. Yes, sir. I've been thinking about you, Krieger. And I've decided that uh, you're not fit to live. You, you got no call, Marshal. I killed them men in self-defense. Sure. Ain't no court in the world that would convict me. I'm plumb innocent. I'm not talking about hanging you. What are you talking about? Krieger, I'm going to walk out of here and wait for you in the street. And I'm going to wait one minute. And if you're not there in one minute, I'm coming back. What for? I'm going to kill you. No. No, I ain't going to fight you. Yes, you are. One minute, Grigo. You, you killed him. Yeah. He had his gun out. He, he, he'd have shot you right in the back. Thanks for letting me know, Chester. Oh, oh my goodness. Is that what you wanted me to do? Yeah, that was it. Well... Suppose I hadn't saw him. Well, then Krigo would have killed another man. I feel kind of sick. <laughs> you did fine, Chester. Now remember, Chester, it was more than one life you just saved. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Vic Perrin, Howard Culver, and Richard Deacon. Harley Bear is Chester, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. on most of these stations, observing the end of Amos and Andy's 26th year of entertaining America, Jack Benny, Bing Crosby, Edward R. Murrow, and Lowell Thomas join a distinguished cast in tribute to Freeman Gosden and Charles Correll, the men who are Amos and Andy. Tomorrow evening on CBS Radio, don't miss this star-studded Amos and Andy anniversary show. George Walsh speaking. For mystery mixed with merriment, join Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evenings on the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>